Welcome back. I, 23 female, have been dating my boyfriend, 23, for around three years now. This relationship has been going on just fine, except that he always treated me badly because of some issues I have. There are always fights and fights. I've been feeling emotionally exhausted for a while. One night after a fight, he left my place. I stayed crying all night and needed somebody to rely on. So I called up a close friend that I had known since I was in kindergarten and invited him over. I knew he was in town visiting because his girlfriend who went to college with me had told me a few days ago. He and I had slept together on a previous occasion many years ago, and at that moment, I wanted that again. That feeling, that rush. I wanted to numb myself to the pain my boyfriend had caused. He came over within an hour, and we had a passionate and love-filled adventure on my couch. Although the romp extended to my bed and the bathtub, too. When we finished Other, we kept talking a little bit and we fell asleep cuddling. The next morning was a repeat of the previous night, but by noon he left to see his girlfriend. At this point, I decided to check my phone and saw I had many messages from my boyfriend who had left me the night before. He had apologized again, like he always did. And his last message said he'd be coming over in a little bit with breakfast. Noodle soup from the Vietnamese place across from my apartment. It was past noon, and I realized he with a pang that he must have been over when me and my friend were, you know. I tried calling him, but it went to voicemail. He never read the texts I sent either, so out of desperation, I called one of his friends and learned from him that my boyfriend was at his place. He said he wasn't doing good and refused to put him on. Later that night, I called again and he answered. He said he heard us and then saw us through the glass and that he's disgusted with me. He called me several choice words and we had a big fight over the phone. I told him he was the one who made me do what I did because he's an abusive jerk. But he said him asking me to go back to college or get a proper job isn't abusive and that I cheated because I wanted to. He said it's on me and now I have to live the rest of my life knowing I'm a cheap S-slang. I feel so broken on the inside now. I've been crying, but I have no actual friends to have my back. I haven't gone to my job in three days without notice, and I'm pretty sure I no longer have that job because the manager has stopped calling. I feel what he said is true, that I'll spend the rest of my life repenting what I did. I do not want that life. There's something really wrong with me, and my boyfriend's really the only one who ever understood me or cared about me. Now I've lost him. What can I do to alleviate the situation? Edit. The issues are that my boyfriend didn't take my mental health into account. I've been diagnosed with anxiety and ADHD, and I found college very challenging because of that, so at the end of second year, I made a decision not to start my third year. That was last year. My boyfriend urged me to find a job, so I did. But I could not continue on that for long and quit. My boyfriend wasn't understanding and called me dramatic and lazy. We were planning to move in together, but my boyfriend said we should hold that thought till I found a job. He said he didn't see it in his best interest to be with a woman that had no job prospects. It was hurtful. Like my worth is only what I could bring to the relationship monetarily. He's from the South, so he's a macho man who doesn't consider mental health issues seriously. I know it's not an excuse for what I did, but I've been really struggling. I'm estranged from my parents and sister. They had similar opinions about my mental health issues. I feel absolutely lost. Comments. Don't be offended, but what a bitch you are. Mental health issues are not. Guys, if someone cheats on you, cut it all out without hesitation. If a woman cheats on you, it means she doesn't love you, and that's almost impossible to change. So have self-respect and keep a little bit of dignity by walking away and turning the page as quickly as possible. If you are going to be sad, that's fine, but don't let them know. As I said, have dignity. It seems like there were issues in your relationship that led you to cheat, and that was probably for the best. It's unfortunate that it took crossing a line into cheating before ending things. Coping with the situation may be challenging, especially if you were in a long-term relationship from a young age and felt pressure from family expectations. People change, and sometimes they outgrow each other, or only one person goes through personal growth. In your case, it seems like your ex seemed to be verbally and emotionally abusive too. 
If I were in your shoes, I would take the time to build strong friendships, enjoy socializing, and have fun. Go on dates and discover what you truly need in a partner. It's an opportunity for personal growth and exploration. Story 2 During the Christmas season, I experienced a period of severe depression, which has been a recurring issue throughout my life. My relationship with my fiancé, who's 13 years older than me, had been deteriorating for some time, and he visited me only twice during my stay in a mental health facility. Upon returning home, I felt a sense of loneliness even when we were in the same room. Although he was trying to give me space, it was the opposite of what I needed and had asked for. Occasionally he would be there for me, but overall things felt distant. Adding to the difficulties, I started heavily drinking at night for two weeks straight, and also experimented with new drugs while in the ward. I was still engaging in self-harm, and to put it simply, everything was pretty awful. When I find myself in such a state, I tend to spiral out of control. I engage in self-harm through involvement with people I don't actually desire, seeking validation, disregarding my boundaries, and engaging in self-sabotaging behavior. This hadn't occurred in this relationship until last year, but my fiancé is well aware of my past struggles. At one point, a man approached me. We started talking, and although he provided me with validation, I couldn't stand him. He was quite older, about 30 years my senior, and held beliefs that strongly contradicted my own, such as being bothered by my bisexuality. Despite this, we began a strange affair. I never had genuine feelings for him, but I craved the attention, validation, and even found a perverse satisfaction in despising myself whenever we met. Our encounters mostly involved cuddling with minimal sexual activity. Nevertheless, it was an affair, and I made the choice to engage in it. I didn't confess this to my fiancé until almost six months later, just last week. It was a difficult conversation, and since then we've had many lengthy discussions. He claims to have forgiven me, mainly because he understands the extent of my struggles and acknowledges the effort I've been putting into improving my mental health. He says he still trusts me. He's asked numerous questions, all of which I have answered truthfully, as he deserves to know the full truth. We have also decided to attend therapy together, and I suggested that he seek individual therapy as well, as he doesn't feel comfortable discussing these issues with his loved ones. However, I can't forgive myself. I lack trust in myself, and I still harbor intense self-hatred. While it provides some relief that the secret is out and I can finally sleep better, I struggle to comprehend how my fiancé could forgive me. I love him and still want to marry him, but part of me almost wishes he wouldn't forgive me and would hate me as much as I hate myself. I apologize for the lengthy post, but if anyone has any advice, I would greatly appreciate it. It is essential to recognize the consequences of your choices and use the guilt and shame you feel as a catalyst for positive change. Channeling these emotions into becoming a better person, a more accountable partner, and committing to never inflict such pain on someone who loves and trusts you again can be a way to make amends. Ultimately, it's up to you to learn from this experience and take responsibility for your actions. By actively working towards personal growth, you can strive to become a better human being and contribute to the healing process. Comments It's clear that you view the situation with a strong sense of condemnation and believe that self-forgiveness should not be granted. You recognize the gravity of your actions and acknowledge the immense pain and betrayal afflicted upon your partner, someone who loved and trusted you deeply. The weight of guilt and shame can serve as powerful motivators for personal growth and transformation. The impact of infidelity on the betrayed partner is profound and enduring. While the pain may diminish over time, it will never completely disappear. Rebuilding trust becomes an uphill battle, and the relationship can never return to its previous state. The aftermath of your actions has left a lasting impact on your partner's ability to trust others. As someone who's also bipolar, I understand the significance of actively managing one's mental health. It requires attending therapy, adhering to medication regimens, and employing coping strategies to prevent engaging in behaviors that could harm oneself or others. This responsibility lies squarely on your own shoulders and should be taken seriously. I have never cheated on a partner because I prioritize this responsibility and uphold my morals and values. 
Based on your account, it seems that your mental health is not adequately controlled if your response to stress is seeking attention through sexual encounters. It's crucial that you seek serious help, diligently follow prescribed medication routines, and reach out to a counselor for support during times of stress, rather than turning to other men. It's essential to regain control over your behavior before causing further harm to your partner. This journey requires hard work, may lead to a less exhilarating life, and can be exhausting at times. Nevertheless, prioritizing stability and ensuring the safety of yourself and your loved ones is worth any sacrifices. If you don't get to the root cause, you will cheat again. Seek therapy, encourage him not to rug sweep this. Don't dwell in misery to get his attention. Don't ask for a break. Communicate how you feel and speak it out, or if you can't write it down. The only reason I'm even suggesting this is because you confessed by yourself. 